Hey guys, it's Paul Radford here with Drag the Bar. So, got back from the, the World Series of Poker in Las Vegas not too long ago. Definitely had a good time down there. Um, wanted to talk a little bit about, we're going to get to some hand replays later on in this video. And for first I'm just going to start off with a few pretty general observations from what I, what I saw. Day one observations, the play was definitely very tight for the first few hours of the event. And you definitely have to be careful early on. Make sure that you're not you're not spewing equity or expecting to get paid off more than you actually will with certain hands. Having said that, there's definitely like the there's not a whole lot of three betting and there's definitely not much four betting that goes on early. Ranges are very tight, and the one t one time I actually got four bet early on was um, was a young younger player who had gotten crippled by me in an earlier hand and then. Um, Ended up running Ace King suited into into his pocket aces, so and that was for around 35 bigs, which um, just get an example of kind of what was going on. So you definitely have to be careful that you're not misreading ranges, and um, I'm not concerned there for 35 bigs, but uh, yeah, definitely something to keep an eye out for. And you start with uh, you start with 4,500 chips, so you um, you're fairly deep when you first. Or start, or not deep, but you know you have 100 bigs or or whatnot. And um, so there were definitely some opportunities to pick up chips early on. And for the one of the more one of the best plays I think out there was I think the value in these tournaments, especially early on, is you have a few players that are just a little bit collie. And they're not really bad, but they they want to see a flop and they want to hit big and they and then they hope to get paid off, and that'll lead them to call pre-flop three bets with pocket pairs from out of position. So you can just kind of three bet them light and then just blow them off on the flop fairly easily, as long as you don't do it too frequently and pick up a few chips here and there. So that's definitely one one thing that I found to be fairly successful. And you just have to be selective, obviously, make sure you're you're not three betting too much, and um, and that's something you really have to keep an eye on if you're playing live and you're used to playing online. So uh, just make sure your frequencies aren't getting aren't getting out of control. Now the other thing I noticed over the and this wasn't just the first day, this is just in general, is definitely keep an eye out for for the Europeans at the table, and um, and I ended up playing with a couple of players from Germany who were, who were very sharp, very aggressive. And uh, also the Scandinavians can be can be really tough. So that's definitely one thing that you want to keep an eye on. And those are players that you want to pay more attention to because their ranges are going to be wider, but they're also going to know how to put you in some tough spots. So um, there's and and as you get later in the tournament, one thing is these aren't the kind of players that are going to come to your table with a small stack. They're the kind of players that are going to they're going to be the big stack at the table. So. Will often have you covered, and you can find yourself in some some real tricky spots. And you don't want to be uh, giving up uh, giving up too much to these players. So that's uh, that's one thing to to keep an eye out for. Um, yeah, and I just put, I put that in my in my slide too, just talking about it. they're not afraid to put chips in the pot. They're often deep, so that's it's important that you understand their aggression. Now, um, overall, obviously, the tournament was went exceptionally well for me and uh, even though I didn't make the final table like I had hoped which would have been amazing I um, I did have a much larger stack than would generally be required for a final table so and that's just because the field size was was pretty insane with I think it was around 3200 or 3300 players in it and that's an important thing to keep in mind making a final table in a tournament with a larger field size is going to be significantly more difficult to do and you're just going to need that many more chips, which is going to be, you know, harder to harder to achieve. So that was um, it was definitely disappointing, but uh, but a good result nonetheless. And um, and I say you know keep in mind your likelihood of winning final table event uh, is going to be significantly less. But uh, for me in this case, it did it really did hurt to go out in 14th. I mean, first uh, first prize I think was 720 or 730 grand. So that uh, that's a lot of money for for anyone, or not for anyone, but for 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 any mere mortal like uh, like my, myself, and likely anyone who's listening to me right now. And um, so it did, and it 
was tough because I was a two to one favorite in that hand and got in with ace queen suited versus uh, jack eight offsuit for a pretty pretty significant pot. It was around nine hundred thousand chips, and um, it was one of those spots where it folded around to the small blind. And I I was sitting in the big blind with ace queen suited, and my opponent the blinds were ten thousand. 10,000, 20,000, and he raised to 45,000. And big antis too, the 3,000 antis, so there was around 30,000 more chips in, in antis in the pot. And he raised to 45, and then um, I just jammed for 450. And he thought about it for for a second, or you know, for a minute, I would say. And then uh, he said, all right, I'll gamble with you. And he just called me with Jack-8 offsuit, and unfortunately the board ran out two pair for him, and, and that was it, so... I was uh, extremely disappointed at the time, and and then kind of a little bit less so later on, and obviously cashed out fairly nicely around thirty-three thousand. So so can't complain too much. But it's um, you know with these tournaments you really do live for the for the big paydays. So it was it was definitely unfortunate. And uh, so anyhow, overall, uh, not tremendous value at these events. In general, I would say most of the play is fairly solid, and uh, but there there's definitely definitely some weak players. Uh, you do have to overcome, of course, the the rake or um, that the that Harris takes. So um, you know you do have you definitely should be able to do that and then achieve some kind of win rate. But it's not going to be it's not going to be tremendous. And I would think that in the larger buy-in events, it's going to be even more difficult than in say a 1500 or, or 1000 where you get a few more recreational players buying in now on a more tangible level like how did I do it how did I how did I make it that far how did I go from started with 4500 chips all the way up to around 600,000 chips and then I chipped down a, a little bit uh, I lost a where I lost a little pot and then um, and then eventually ended up losing out on an all-in so you know, for the most part, just playing aggressive, calculated poker, being careful that I'm not spewing too much equity, and that most hands that I entered, I have a plan to win, and I'm putting that into effect. So I'm not just calling with suited connectors, with position, and then folding flops when I when I miss, and, and things like that. I wasn't I wasn't spewing like that. I was tight. I was aggressive. I made some moves here and there. Uh, I wasn't afraid to to throw my chips out there at, you know on a bluff or on a three bet if I if I thought it was profitable but at the same time I you know made some big laydowns throughout the event as well so just that's essential that's the short version and um you know one one thing to keep in mind calling with pocket pairs you're playing on a 20 big blind stacks and get you killed uh unless you're able to bluff your opponent po- post flop and I and I mentioned this cuz I did see this remarkably late in the tournament I saw players who were set mining on uh, on stacks that, in my opinion, were too short, and really not against the kind of player that you would expect to to be giving up post flop. So it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but players still do that, and uh, that's the reason I mention it here. So anyhow, I think that's enough kind of general stuff. I wanted to get to a couple hands, the interesting stuff. So uh, so let's uh, let's get started here. All right, so here we go. Now this was a this was one of the more interesting hands that I saw in the in the whole tournament, and this was very this was not long before I went out, and the blinds were ten thousand twenty thousand. There was three thousand in antes, so we were starting each hand with close to sixty thousand chips in the middle. Now I was unable to put the the antes on this. They have this drag the bar has this neat little hand converter like replayer d- device that you can use, and that's what I use, but it was glitching for me on the antis, so I just didn't put them in. And um, anyhow, this hand and the, and the stack sizes, I just kept the same for for the unimportant people in the hand, and just um, just essentially um, put them in for the for the two players that are going to be involved in in a pot here. So, all right, that's set up. Here we go, and it. F- uh, under the gun folds, under the gun plus one folds, and then it gets raised. Now, this player has started the hand with around a million one. You you know, you, you can't tell exactly when you're when you're playing live and you have the the mound of chips. I actually think it was a little over a million one, like a million one fifty, something something around there. 
and um, as the starting stack, so the raise was forty five thousand, which is pretty standard. People were raising two times or you know two two and then just a few more chips, whatever, so like forty five that was pretty standard it's raise and this was um this was a very tight player actually and um and who hadn't been raising very much at the table and then we ended up getting a call by the cutoff who had had the initial uh, tight pl tight player covered it was a bit of a bit of a station kind of collie at times now I'd played with and a little bit older around 50 or, or thereabouts and I think that's an important tell as well when you're playing live it's one thing you can't see when you're online but you can when you can see it live, it does make a difference. The younger they are, generally the more aggressive they are. The older they are, the tighter and more like predictable I would say their ranges are. So, anyhow, that's that's you know def definitely stereotyping a bit, but overall I'd say it's fairly accurate. And um, and there's the call, the, and then the big blind comes along for the extra twenty-five thousand. Now the initial raise is sitting on Ace King suited, so we're gonna say it's the hero. It's, it's not me. But for the just for the sake of this hand, that's how we have it set up, and we get a rainbow king eight seven board, and it says the pot's one fifty. The pot was actually around one hundred and seventy thousand. So the big line checks, and then we're faced with a decision here with the ace king, and I think that a continuation bet here of around eighty thousand, eighty five thousand would be more than appropriate as a tight player. One of the problems with doing uh one of the problems with anything larger than that is you could even potentially be blowing off some of the value. So if the cutoff may be called with a king king something suited, like a king Ted suited and you bet this extremely aggressively, close to pot, maybe they just straight up fold the flop. Not necessarily likely, but definitely a possibility that maybe you're booting out some of your value. And also, if you get raised, it doesn't leave you much flexibility to, in terms of what you're doing. But uh, in this case, the initial raiser decided to lead out close to pot, and I think that is that's a little could be potentially problematic for. Um, and the big blind did not have 155,000 left, that, so that's that doesn't apply here. The big blind had had a fair number of chips around I think 700,000 or something like that and uh, 7,800 so that was, but it, that was the lead and then the cutoff interestingly min raises to 300,000 chips and at this point we're at like 16 players left in the tournament there's only about 11 million chips in play so both players had over 10% of the starting of, of all the chips in the tournament and the value of those chips would be probably at this point in the tournament 150 200,000 dollars if you you know if you could do it like that uh so it was um this is this is a big pot and this is a big decision to make here with with ace king so you have you have top pair, you have the ultimate kicker, and you have a bit of an older player raising you here, and you have to make a decision as to what to do. And I think, and 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 I'll let's um, well, I'm just, I'll just show you the result, and then we can, we'll, we can talk a little bit more about it. So, the player ultimately, the tight player who was the initial raiser, did decided to go with their ace king and re-raised all in after thinking about it for a moment and the cutoff called all in a couple of insignificant cards ran out and the initial raiser had ace king the cutoff had flopped a set of eights and there that was a pretty massive pot uh, like 2.3 million 2.4 million something like that uh, chips at the time. So, I think there's, there's a couple of things that, first off, the min raise.